My name is Juanita Johnson, J-U-A-N-I-T-A, Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, and I am the City Council Representative for District 2, City of Omaha. I'm Attorney Timothy Ashford, T-I-M-O-T-H-Y, A-S-H-F-O-R-D. I represent the juvenile who has been charged with manslaughter. Uh, Paul Feilman, uh, F is in Frank, E-I-L-N-A-N-N, -N, I'm a retired mental health therapist. And a community activist, a great one. Okay. So what are we here for today? We're here because we're going to, as a group of community activists and leaders, we are going to approach Don Klein after or before the next pretrial in the juvenile's case of manslaughter to ask him to dismiss all charges. Now, as a result of a swim party, which occurred on September 5th, 2023, in which a juvenile was attending with his family, and there were about 10 to 30 people there. What occurred was the juvenile, in self-defense, shot and killed an individual who had brutally attacked his father. Now, as a result of that incident on September 5th, 2023, 22. 2022, thank you. As a result of that incident on September 5th, 2022, Don Klein has brought some charges which are manslaughter and use of a weapon. He's had those charges on file for six months. We then instituted a deposition, which is our right. At the deposition, the only witness, an eight-year-old child, said that, testified in the deposition, that the juvenile shot and killed the person who was shot because the juvenile believed that person was going to kill his dad. The juvenile is 14 years old. This is a clear case of self-defense. We are going to ask Don Klein to dismiss all charges and there's going to be a community activist and a number of individuals in the community, the leaders, we're going to ask him to dismiss the charges. Instead of Don Klein dismissing the charges after he got that information that the eight-year-old so said, stated, and the only eyewitness, it was self-defense, Klein then added the charges March 6, minor possession and tampering. Now, he can't prevail on those charges, and this is why. In terms of tampering, at the preliminary hearing, we believe there was no evidence that my client tampered with, destroyed, or even believed there was some belief, some judicial proceeding that was going to be instituted because it was self-defense. My client's African American and he was charged by Don Klein with manslaughter and use of a weapon. When you compare this with the Skurlock case where the individual who was white was not charged and you compare this with the officer who testified, Jordan Brent who was white, who killed an individual in the line of self-defense, in the line of duty based on self-defense, um, who was also white, they were not charged. Now, what we're saying is 
This is a valid charge of self-defense for our client. And he did not tamper with the gun because he just disassembled it. He disassembled it to make the gun safe. And the reason he disassembled the gun was because he's been trained at a gun range since he's been 10. He's used to that particular weapon owned by his dad. He's disassembled it before to clean it. He just decided at that point, under pressure, to take the gun apart and make it safe. The gun wasn't thrown in a sewer. The gun was not thrown in a creek. The gun was disassembled. In fact, the police officers put it back together and fired it, used various test firing methods to make sure it was a gun used in the particular shooting. Now, they also say that my 14-year-old, who was basically at the scene, left. Well, there were 30 people at that scene. He's 14. His dad is unconscious. An eight-year-old boy has just ran for his life. My client left the scene, which is what any logical, reasonable person would use. Now, to sum it up, in order to have a self-defense and defense of others for this manslaughter charge, he has to believe my client at the time he made those shots, that it was a good faith basis for him to shoot, that it was reasonable, and that he had no other alternative to shoot. And when the 250 or 260 pound man had knocked his dad out and was about to kill his dad, my client picked up the gun which fell from his dad's waistband and shot the individual twice killing him. Now that's all I have to say. We're going to ask Don Klein to dismiss all charges. Thank you. So how was the decision made to come to Juanita? Community leader. I'm in her district. She's my city council person. I'm going to every elected official I can go to. So that's my right in this United States. Juanita, what are your feelings on it? Well, first of all, um, this was an unfortunate situation. Um, certainly um, my heart goes out to the individual that was killed in this incident. But also, um, the family um, where um, the young man, a 14-year-old, uh, felt the need to um, protect his dad. I, I feel my heart goes out to that family as well. So in a nutshell, my heart goes out to both families. So I'm here today to support my constituents, support my community. This was a terrible situation. It is from all information that I've seen thus far, um, it looks as though it was self-defense. Um, and I think that greater minds will rule this as such and allow this to move on so that this young man, 14 years old, um, can kind of be productive as a citizen. I think everyone in our community have the right to uh, be productive in, in, in a world such as this. Uh, we all have that right. Um, yeah, um, we are forced, uh, circumstances come about outside of our controls, which certainly this one appears to be as such. Um, what do you do? How do you respond? You're 14 years old. You don't have a fully developed brain. What do you do? I mean, you do what you can do. And it appears that that's what he did. Um, should he uh, be marked for his entire life going forward because of this? Um, that's something that we need to look at um, as a community, as a society. Um, what do we do now? Where do we go from here? What are our next steps? What's in the best interest of all those involved? Uh, two questions, real quick. Attorney Klein is suggesting that the youth receive some treatment, some emotional treatment for this ordeal. Um, is that same concern being um, directed at the eight-year-old who witnessed 
uh, the ordeal? If not, why not? Uh, second question is, uh, <clears throat> has there, uh, given that the youth was uh, deposited at the juvenile detention center for quite some time, um, has there been any uh, feedback from Douglas County Commissioner Chris Rogers in this regard? And if not, why not? Uh, you want to answer? I, I think those are all valid questions. Unfortunately, I don't have the answers to those, but certainly would uh, explore getting the answers. Um, and here's what's going on. For self-defense, my client has been taken out of the home for the last six months. His, he was a running back at Westside High School on their football team. Uh, on the, you know, I won't tell you, it's the lower level. He wasn't on the varsity. But he's not been able to practice, not been able to go through his regular school routine. He's been out of the home since September 5th. They took him first to Douglas County Youth Center. Then he's at Cedars in Lincoln, Nebraska. He's been there for a number since that time. Don Klein, and we're going to ask you today, if you see this, let him go home. They have the ability to let him go home and get back in the his routine. He's not a danger to society. He's not a danger to anyone else. In fact, this was a case of self-defense. Now, in terms of the treatment, since they have not rendered a adjudication in juvenile court, Don Klein has had my child, the juvenile, in custody for six months, and he hasn't gotten him any type of treatment because he can't. The parents have taken it upon themselves to pay for their own treatment for that time period, in addition to paying for an expert, in addition to paying for me as their attorney. Now, if he was so concerned about treatment, he would have sought treatment for the eight-year-old, and he would have sought treatment for my client. And if he wants any type of treatment to begin, he could dismiss all charges, and he can go to someone, somewhere, and say, is this kid eligible for any type of treatment? But since for the six months, Klein has not given him any type of treatment, and he can't until he gets some kind of charges. And the charges were filed so that he could have something on the juvenile after six months. Just curious, will that treatment <clears throat> also include teaching the youth not to defend uh, a parent or a loved one? It seems like that's an old Judeo-Christian uh, belief that children should respect and protect a loved one. So if, if, if part of the counseling is to have a black youth not to respect uh, and care for his father or parents or mother, uh, I'm just curious, will that training also include that kind of uh, focus? Never. No. We're, this is our fundamental right in the... United States of America. And I'm going to send you all the statutes as I always do so you don't have to look them up and the, I send you the case law. So it's, a, it's an easy read for you. Now you got to do is check it. But here's the deal. Everybody's entitled to the right of self-defense. And I bring the analogy of the Scurlock case where Don Klein decided same situation to allow the individual to be released and the, the officer Jordan Brandt who testified. He killed a man in the line of, of duty. And when you get in that situation, you don't know what's going to happen and what's going to go on. And it's a minute that you have to make a life or death situation occur. And in this case, luckily, instead of stating that my client was a hero, they branded him as a villain. And that's all for taking on the heroic act of saving his father from a man who had just knocked him out and was about to kill him. Why not just let it go through the court system? Your client has put in not guilty pleas, or uh, I know it's not, not guilty in juvenile, but I know you want the charges dismissed. Say they're not. Why not trust the court system? Some may say that. Well, basically because I feel at this point they're insufficient evidence for him to proceed and as ethically as a prosecutor you don't wait six months to add new charges and y'all should ask him about the reason he waited six months when there was no new evidence to add six 
six to add new charges. So he had a minor in possession and tampering. Why? You knew that up front. So you're not going to get him on manslaughter now in this obvious. So I want to get him on something. So I can avoid civil liability. They won't sue me. And you can put that on the tape. So, um, so we want him to know that the community is now watching. We want him to know that we're, we're going to come and talk to him as a group. And we're going to ask him to dismiss. And my question to the media and to the community, why should a 14-year-old go through the criminal justice system and the ordeal and the stress of being considered a criminal for firing two shots to save the life of his dad? That's what I want to know. Every day that you have these criminal charges over his head is torture to that young man. And that's why I don't want it to go any further in the criminal justice system. Any questions? Um, what's your response to Mr. Parker's family wanting this in adult court? It was appropriately placed in juvenile court because he's a juvenile. So you got to follow the law. And the law says that he it was self-defense. And if you read the autopsy report, you know what kind of uh, things he had in his system, Mr. Parker. You'll see that there was a, if you read the police report, the full one, you'll see that there was, uh, this guy was just, he was out of control that day, uh, Mr. Parker. And when, he, when you knock out a man and you're about to hit him again and there's a gun available, you run the risk of someone using it, which is what occurred in this case. Self-defense and defense of others. Any questions? Hmm? Thank you. When do you plan to meet with Don? The city council person is going to meet with Don. We have the pre-trial conference. I'm going to bring, we're going to come with a group of community leaders and community activists. And we're going to ask him to sit down as our elected official and explain to us his rationale for adding charges at this late date and how he ultimately wants this to end. And in my response to him and my statement to him is, I'm the attorney. No matter what you do, I have to be ready for trial. So I will be ready for trial. But the fact of the matter is that we want you to explain, not only to the African American community, but to the community at large, the difference between the Skurlock case, the Brandt case, and the Juvenile's case. And we want you to make sure that you explain the reason for the addition of the late charges at this date. And that name will be forthcoming? Yeah, that will be, well, we're going to have a press conference. I'm going to organize that and I'm going to invite y'all back on the 22nd. We have that pre-trial. I mean with, 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 uh, with Klein. Yes, the meeting forthcoming as soon as we can get in with you. Okay. Okay, as soon as we can get everybody organized and can meet with you. Because he's got to explain. And every day while we're talking, you say, let it run through the legal system. That's good for you and me. But for a 14-year-old who's been taken out of his home, he can't participate in athletics. This is his high school years. And all he did was fire two shots to save his dad's life. This is horrendous. This, let's say it's hell for him. I'll say it. Thank you. Thank you.